Hmm. Well, hello one and all, welcome to Seen Through Glass. Welcome to Connecticut, just north of New York. I flew here yesterday from the UK, and as the title would suggest, I've come to film a fairly special car. Which is why this weather is a little bit disheartening. Because essentially, I've got one shot at this. I leave again tomorrow morning. Today is the only day we have to film, and, and yeah. Well, I guess we're gonna get wet. Well, the Italian car gods must be happy about this because the rain has stopped briefly. So, let me introduce you to the world's only manual Ferrari 458 Speciale. Now, I think most of you will know, Ferrari never offered a manual gearbox for the 458 Speciale. They never offered a manual gearbox for the standard 458 Italia either. So it's fallen to a private owner to do this conversion. And he's done it as a bit of a passion project. He's obsessed with manual gearboxes and loves the Speciale. And one day had the slightly mad thought, what if? Now, I'm not someone who generally thinks that cars can be too powerful for a manual box. I mean, let's not forget 1980s F1 cars had a thousand horsepower and manual shifters. But I do acknowledge that some modern cars are not only built for and with double clutch automatic gearboxes, but they suit them as well. So part of me is super excited by this conversion and so intrigued to see what it's gonna be like. And another part of me realizes that the 458 Speciale is not a car that ever made me think, ooh, that would really benefit by having a six speed manual. Now, I'm fully aware that interest in this car is likely to be quite high, so it may bring some new viewers to the channel. So if you are new around here, welcome. My name is Sam. Usually on this channel, I kind of document, well, adventures. Adventures with my own cars and adventures with cars like this. So, of course, today we are going to be getting into how this thing drives, what it's like. But before we do that, or whilst we do that, there's also some storytelling that needs to take place to explain a little bit as to how it was created, a bit more as to why, when, etc. So yeah, look, join me on this adventurous day as we learn more about, yeah, this manual speciale. Now, to get ahead of any naysayers, this thing is the real deal. It's not being built by Kevin on his driveway with a manual gearbox out of an MX-5 or a Miata for my US viewers. The owner of this car is the founder of Modificata, who are famous for manual converting 360 challenges, 355 challenges. I mean, they know what they're doing. And this thing took over three years to develop because he wanted a manual speciale, not half-assed effort. So everything works as it should. There is nothing different apart from the fact that I will be selecting the gears manually. Key in, clutch down, make sure that I'm in neutral, and start. <laughs> there we go. Shall we see if I stall it? That would be fairly embarrassing, wouldn't it? Uh, release park brake, first gear. I'm moving! I'm moving! Oh. Right, first stop this morning is breakfast because I'm jet lagged as hell. When I'm tired, I get hungry. So yeah, we're gonna get some food, but also it gives me a chance to sit down with the owner of the car, founder of Modificato, and ask him a load of questions now that I've had kind of initial experience. I'm sorry for all the American viewers who are appalled that I've made the cliche decision to come to a proper old school diner, but I'm not from around here. <laughs> when we were saying, where should we go for some food? I was like, I want a diner. and I. I I want pancakes and that's what I've got. So I'm going to be tucking into those in two seconds, but we've just been chatting about the car and you know, it's really interesting because a lot of that initial experience just now is quite familiar to me. Regular viewers of this channel will know that I own a manual 360 Modena and loads of the components used in this conversion are borrowed from things like a 360 or a 430 or maybe even a 355, I don't know. But it means that, well, the gear knob, for example, the 360 gear knob, even some of the linkage and the movement, what my right hand is doing feels very natural. But the difference comes in the pedal box because when you're manual converting a 360 or 430, things like that, well, 
it's an easier job because the parts exist. You just got to kind of do the work. There's no such thing as a manual pedal box for a 458. So they had to think outside the box. And actually what they realized is that the 458 race car does have a clutch pedal because like many race cars, you have to engage the clutch to kind of pull away. Then it's a sequential box so you can shift gears without the clutch, but it has a clutch pedal. So they went, oh, well, well let's use that. Which means that car has a race car pedal box and that is a very different thing. Firstly, the clutch pedal, the travel is very short and the biting point is right down by the floor so it kind of takes a while to get used to the biting point and things like that. The brake pedal, very different. It doesn't have that kind of brake booster that you get in most road cars. It's not that kind of squishiness or that assistance. So it's a bit more of an authentic feel. Also means you need to get deeper into the pedal. But for me, the most fascinating thing with this, the Speciale, is the accelerator. Because of course, Ferrari never planned for anyone to manually blip the accelerator between gears. So the computers, the technology in that car, well, <laughs> classic Ferrari, are all about stroking an owner's ego. So essentially, if you give quite a lot of throttle pressure in a Speciale, the engine doesn't necessarily deliver exactly what it should. There's a bit of control there. But that means when we're dealing with a manual, you go to blip the throttle between gears to kind of rev match or heel and toe, and you've got to really get into that throttle because the initial response isn't quite there. It does eventually rev up, but you've got to get largely into it. So it's, it's strange because, as I say, so much of it feels familiar and almost like my 360. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is way more natural than I was expecting. But then actually when you get into the nitty gritty of it, it's very different and unique. So I haven't figured it out yet. And this was a very short drive to, to get some pancakes and learn more about the car. After this, we'll find some quieter, bigger roads. And I guess start pushing on. And firstly, see if I can make sense of it all, but also get used to it, whether it all starts to gel. Because initially, it's definitely harder work than other manual Ferraris I've driven. This coffee's disgusting, by the way. Now, this is the only Speciale in the world to be converted to manual. There was no blueprint for the team at Modificata. It was trial and error, and it took them a while to find all those parts I just mentioned and then get the car to accept them. The aim is to make this thing look, feel, and drive like a factory product. But at the end of the day, the factory never intended this car to have a manual gearbox, so they were always going to face unexpected challenges. That throttle map thing I just mentioned, for example, it's, it's a unique characteristic that you would never normally notice or even know about, because it's just part of the way that the gearbox, engine, and computer work to deliver that special experience, you know, maximum driver engagement and performance. But if you take one of those elements away, i.e. the automatic gearbox, well, suddenly that special magic formula is missing a key component. Long story short, what I'm trying to say is that based on my initial impressions and then what I just learned from the owner, I believe this is probably as good as anyone is ever going to get converting one of these cars to a manual because the brain of the Speciale was just never prepared for a human to be shifting the gears. When you do it, you have to be brave, committed, and essentially not let the car know that anything is different. So it meant as we left the diner, I was feeling a little intimidated. <laughs> Just quickly, I need to interrupt things to tell you about Carl Friedrich, who have sponsored this part of the video. You might have heard me talking about Carl Friedrich's amazing suitcases before. Well, a few weeks ago, they sent me this, their Palissy weekend bag. It's one I've used for this trip because it is a very short trip, like I mentioned in the intro. I'm basically here for one day, so I didn't need to bring a lot of stuff. Actually, most of the stuff I needed to bring was camera gear. So in here, I have my tripods and various uh, adapters for GoPros and my drone and things like that, and then a few clothes on top. It all fitted in very nice and neatly. She has loads more space in here than you might think because it's a super small and compact bag, meaning I could take it with my camera bag onto the flight and no questions were asked. But this is super nice leather. This thing feels outrageously high quality. It's really nice. And again, it's one of those bags that I don't really want to travel with because I don't want it to get beaten up. But I think the more beaten up it gets, the better it might look. Uh, I always recommend the Car Friedrich products if you're someone out there who's traveling and just wants, well, style, convenience, solid products, high quality, leather, they tick every box. And I know many of you, like me, like to go on adventures. So if you're looking for a new suitcase, a new weekend bag, or any other kind of travel product, go and check out Carl Friedrich because they might have something for you. A link is in the description below. Anyway, let's go back to the Speciale. Okay, I've spent some time behind the wheel of this car now. I feel like I've started to figure it out. I feel like I've learned as much as I need to learn in this moment about how it came to be. So let's get into it. Talk about what it's like to drive. My good Lord, this is some kind of Speciale creation. 
it's fascinating because, you know, Speciale is so often regarded as one of the greatest modern day Ferraris. How do you improve on greatness? I wouldn't necessarily say this is a 100% an improvement, but it has created something very unique. Something quite terrifying. I often say my favourite Ferraris are the Ferraris that want to kill you. This thing, oh my god, it wants to kill you. I came to this road about 20 minutes ago, just doing some scouting. I turned off onto a much narrower, twistier road, and I mistimed one of my downshifts, messed up the heel and toe, and locked the rear axle. Oh god! Well, it nearly spun me round. Luckily, my amazing car control saved me in the moment, but. I was like, ah! Immediately I'm in love. The thing is so highly strung. It's actually quite exhausting. Catching cars like this on this road, well, they're nice moments. I'm like, oh, phew, I can relax. I'm sure lots of you would have seen the 911K video that Chris Harris did recently. That special Porsche where he looks exhausted whilst driving because there's just so much going on. And this car, feels similar because it's so capable the speciale every corner i go into the car's going come on i'm a lace car faster but trying to attack the road whilst then also managing this magic vehicle because that's exactly you have to manage it it's not like a bike 360 where you can kind of be a bit sloppy and it's just nice and it's just involving this is wow direct input of the territory like I just said, if you get that wrong at any point, the car is not happy. But if you get it right, oh my lord. You know, someone made an analogy. This car's a bit like a golf game. It's very rare that you ever make the perfect round. If you're not a golf player, you won't know what I'm talking about. But the owner of this car said, the amount of times he still fluffs up a gear shift, but he kind of loves that he does because he's endlessly chasing perfection. And this car doesn't give you perfection easily. It really makes you work in it. It is hard work. And you can still say, well, what's the point? You're holding the car back so much. And I am, I am 100% holding this car back. They're going to be holding it back even with the flappy paddles. But, for me to be this involved, to have to really drive, I'm driving, I'm driving a proper modern 600 horsepower Ferrari. Um, the only similar experience I can think of is a Carrera GT. And actually, at the diner a moment ago, we were looking, and the stats are strangely similar between these two cars. Similar weight, 600 of horsepower, now both in manual gearboxes. And it's got that gravitas, that kind of like, oh, what could happen? This doesn't rev as freely. And I would say dynamically it's a much better car. But yeah, it's something which you are ultimately responsible for. Whereas I feel like in its standard format, it just looks after you so well, which is nice. Not everyone wants this, not everyone needs this kind of like, oh, I am exhausted. As you've seen, this is a big, open, sweepy road. The tight twister stuff. I'm not sure I've got the cojones, the cojones, I don't speak Spanish, to take on something a little bit more narrow. This thing is absolutely mind-boggling. Let's not forget, the 458 represented not only a whole new era for Ferrari, but for supercars in general, it marked the end of the analogue era. This thing is nearly a living, breathing computer. There is so much processing power going on when you drive this thing down the road, I think it's hard for you to comprehend. So the fact that they were able to sort of, you know, negotiate with that computer and say, look, please, please let us do this, and the computer went, yeah, all right, like, if you want to, that's what's mind-blowing. And actually, you kind of almost feel it as you start driving fast. It's like that negotiation is going on in real time. The computer's going like, well, if you really want to select the gears manually, you're like, have a go. And if you get it right, it's like, fair play, well done. And if you get it wrong, it's like, no, 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 no. So the car has its personality 
but as a cyborg, which I wasn't necessarily expecting. But I think that's where this kind of psychotic maniac feeling comes from. The fact that it's a constant battle to kind of, well, one that you need to and want to win. Anyway, the bloody sun's come out. Who would have thought that happened when I woke up this morning? Pull back those curtains, I'm like, it's gonna be a washout. Now, I kind of feel like I should just sit here and work on my tan, but I won't, because I want to drive this thing a little bit more. Right, I've uh, swallowed a brave pill. I've come back to the road that I nearly died on earlier. Because as the sun has come out, I'm hoping that some, well, slightly drier tarmac and some slightly higher tire temperatures are going to make this thing a little bit more controlled. Absolutely no guarantees though. It is a road like this that makes this car with a manual gearbox a real handful. And actually, it makes uh, Luigi, the judgmental onboard computer, most judgmental because, well, you're gonna get things wrong. <laughs> I mean, there's a big old school bus. I find third to second the hardest, the hardest sort of rev match to do. Just gotta give it so much welling. It's just hard to really get into that throttle when you're coming down in the big braking zone. Um, don't get me wrong, it's where this car is at its most engaging and most frenetic, but one false move and yeah, I'm going straight on at this hairpin Alto. And if you string it together, it is good. I just can't work out whether I'd be having a better time in a standard car. I think all I'm doing here is sweating <laughs> but arguably this road isn't really suited to a stand speciality either it's too tight it's too narrow it's actually a, a tip from good old Matt Farrow so thank you Matt but I would have preferred to come here in a little like Alpha 4C or this Camaro is in a 458 speciality it's hard in mouth kind of stuff yeah I think starting to realise, well, you've got to be a certain type of person to own a car like this, and potentially, oh, potentially, it's when you've uh, basically owned everything else, and you're just looking for some kind of thrill. This is definitely a thrill. Pretty exhausting one. change aside, I think what I loved, but also perhaps struggled with, as you just saw with this Speciale, is that the car is so good, so capable, so fast, that the thought or feeling of taking your hand off the steering wheel to change gear as you're barreling into a corner or link together a few bends is so sketchy, your heart can't help but just leap out of your chest. It's been a long time since I've driven a, a modern car, which made me feel so alive. So many new cars, and I mean since like 2010 onwards, have been dialed back, you know, made to be more accessible, easy to drive at high speeds. They look after the driver. This feels like an old school, raw, almost analog monster. Strangely, a bit like an F40. With more rugged capability, you can take on any road, even the ones that aren't roads. Kia, movement that inspires. Signature seasoning and buttery flavor in every twist. Dots, sensationally seasoned pretzels. Well, it's the end of the day, which means it's the end of my time with the manual 458 Speciale. I've been trying to think how I'm gonna sum up my experience with this car. Firstly, I'm very lucky to have had this experience. I think I'm like the third or fourth person in the world to have driven this car since it's been created. So yeah, huge thanks to the owner, to the team at Modificata for or making this all happen. You know, here's the weird thing, right? Uh, I've driven quite a few manual converted 360 Challenge Stradales. And with that car, it almost feels like, well, like it makes sense. It feels like a very natural and authentic experience. Maybe it's because why well, things happening a lot slower. 
faster the car is slower but the brakes are slower the turning is slower and it just gives you more time to well change gear so it just all feels a bit more symbiotic like maybe Ferrari should have made a manual version of that car at that time where with this thing, as I've kind of tried to outline, it feels like you're in this constant battle, which is so fun and it's so exhilarating, but maybe it kind of highlights the fact that, well, Ferrari never intended this car to have a manual gearbox. It doesn't feel that natural. It feels amazing and Frankenstein-like and very cool and unique, but yeah, just a teeny bit jarring. So, bravo to the team that made this, and I'm so glad that the owner enjoys it and loves it and will get out and experience it way more than I have today. But yeah, well, that, that's going to be my summary for now. I think I need more time to reflect on it, but I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you have. Stay subscribed for plenty more videos.